go. All right, so you should see the, the uh, meeting has started to record. Uh, we have had quite a few people reach out and ask if this will be a recorded session as well as where can they find it. Uh, that will all be available in the, um, the portal tile uh, icon under the EDSB resources. Uh, welcome, I am Mark Obey, and today we're going to take a look at the EDSB drop-in for this week. Uh, we're going to try our best to do bi-weekly uh, check-ins. Um, myself and Heidi will be working on the high school sessions. So this uh, originally was designed as a high school session, but we've opened it up to others uh, being that communication with parents and students and what parents and students see uh, is kind of relative to everybody. But uh, we will have uh, the Edsby High School drop-ins as well as there are some for elementary specifically as well. So welcome. Uh, what I'm going to do is I will just continue with this presentation. Uh, we have, I think, 10 or 11 slides, and then I'll open it up to questions. So this is specifically uh, communication with parents and what students and parents see. I'm just going to change this here. Perfect. So uh, first thing, communicating with the parents. Uh, essentially, there are many different ways to communicate with parents in Edsby. Uh, first is the class feed. So kind of your Facebook feel, the main area. Uh, the second would be to broadcast messages, as well as number three is individual messages to either individual students or individual parents. Uh, we'll go through all of that as well. If you do have any questions, though, please feel free to type them in the chat. Uh, we have Chandre, Carrie, Loren, quite a few of the EDSB full-time people looking and, and helping us support with this that I'm sure will be there to, to answer questions. Or if nothing else, alert me that uh, there's something I need to address. So please feel free to let me know uh, about that. Uh, the class feed, first off. So uh, messages you write in the class feed are visible to the parents and students. Uh, this is a feature in, in the class setup. Uh, you can restrict students as well as parents from actually entering and seeing anything about the class. But one thing you should know is that uh, a student can see and participate if you allow them, as well as a parent. Uh, the parent has a limited view. They do not see what any other student produces, but they can see anything that you post. So for example, uh, a, a parent cannot interact with the posts. They can read them, and therefore you could theoretically use this to communicate with parents as well as the students. So depending on your grade and context, uh, the feed may be very student-centered or deliberately parent-centered. So for example, if you are a kindergarten teacher or grade one teacher, uh, maybe much of what you post may be directed uh, to the parents, knowing the parents will be able to see that. Uh, but on, honestly, or uh, more more realistically for a high school student, uh, they might be in this environment quite regularly. You might be using this as your LMS. So this might be an area where you see a lot of student interaction, but just know that the parents feed um, is uh, able to be seen, see a message pop up, I'll just grab that. Uh, the parents feed will only see what you as the teacher post. So I will show an, another example of that here right away. I'm just gonna get to this question. Is it possible to delete messages from the feed? I've tried to delete some to clean up the feed, but they're still showing up. So uh, that is one thing we've noticed in the feed. Uh, we can um, mark something that needs to be, I'm just gonna see if I can give you an example of exactly that. We can mark it and uh, edit. Oh, sorry, you can delete it under the, the drop down on the right. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, share my tab so you can see this so i'm just in one of my test accounts one of my test teachers um and these are all the posts the post is created automatically anytime you create an assessment or any item um here's one for example i just threw in a test video this uh, blue drop down arrow uh, i can either pin it which means it would be something very important on the left hand side you can see pinned items uh, and then i could delete it so you should have the ability to delete a post. Um, if that doesn't uh, pop up for you, let us know. Um, and that's something too we can we can help you with if there's an issue. Back to the presentation. Uh, so under the class feed, here's an example of obviously maybe uh, an early years teacher. Uh, I look forward to meeting you at the teacher night. Here's a bit about me and they can attach a poster or a picture. Uh, and again, a, a parent cannot interact with that. They can't make a post about that, uh, but nor could they see if any of the other students, if they were in a grade 
9, 10, or 11 class, see what they have maybe responded to that. It's more of an informational piece, but you can absolutely use the class feed as an area to disseminate information if you so choose. Um, you can also, uh, as well, in that class feed, post notes. You can post a journal, assessments, events, uh, or even a poll. Uh, you can take pictures, you can record messages, you can upload files, you can add links. Uh, there are many different ways to engage the students and communicate with parents using the class feed. Uh, many of you are fully utilizing this already with your students and families. We've seen some really cool examples of this already. The second way would be through broadcasting a message to all of your parents. Uh, so for high school, you can select certain classes uh, if you have a message that only pertains to a particular class or apply to all of the parents uh, of which you teach. So the first thing you'd want to do would be to navigate to your home screen. Shoot, I am not sharing. There we go. My bad. Uh, I should be sharing this now. There we go. Uh, you would be broadcasting your meeting page. Uh, you would navigate first to your home. Uh, the home tab and then click on parents. You'll see all your parents there uh, on the right hand side of the screen. From there, you'll be able to choose some filters to determine which class of parents you would like to include. Um, right here, it just shows all parents. Uh, on the left hand side there, you can see all the different elementary classes that this person teaches. Uh, in this circumstance with an elementary teacher, all would be appropriate. They're all kind of the same students in the same class. For a high school, uh, high school application, this might be very different. So for example, arts education, that could be your ELA 9 versus your TGG or homeroom uh, versus kind of the afternoon block of, of science. So you can either uh, send a message to all parents or potentially just one. This is where you would actually do that on the left-hand side here. Uh, once you've selected either all or the appropriate class, uh, if you look at the right hand side, there's a little drop down arrow. And this is where you can either message the parents. Uh, you can invite them to a group. You can remove them from the group or you can export. And I believe uh, after this, Chandra is going to show you a few different things. Uh, one in particular is creating a class list for all the parents and all the contact information of your students in your class. That can be very helpful. Uh, I know some of you also might say we're going really fast here and we are. Uh, but not only will this recording be available, but we'll also make the steps available to you in, as well. This will all be available in the uh, Edsby resources icon um, in your uh, portal. So in this one, uh, we had selected all. It automatically BCCs everybody, which is really nice because I know we all uh, want to make sure the anonymity or at least uh, reply emails aren't uh, uh, a problem moving forward, but this uh, person selected um, all. It grabs all the parents who are in the system and it will send them a message. So one thing to note is that Edsby is its own entity. Edsby, it's kind of its all encompassing. It is our platform for communication. Um, so a parent has to be in the environment. It will not automatically forward an email to their personal email address. But if they have notifications turned on, once they create their account, when they're invited, it will alert them saying, hey, you have a new message. And it, it provides a direct link. All they need to do is click the link. Or if they have the app on their phone, it will take them directly to their message. So uh, certainly one of the things we want to relay is uh, making sure people have the notifications turned on. Uh, you can type in your message here and uh, click send. Sorry, I see a, a few questions here. Um, I think Loren will uh, will help with the first one. Confirmed it was the browser. It didn't work on Safari. Tried it in Chrome. That is one thing we've heard uh, a few different issues um, with different browsers. Edsby themselves have told us that Chrome is a browser that they recommend as the best for, for things working. And that's certainly been our experience here as well. I know I'm a, a Mac user and I, I typically use Safari a lot, but uh, Chrome is uh, typically the browser that works best for us. Francis uh, sending Edsby messages email. Yeah, so 
uh, it will just send them uh, in a message within Edsby. Uh, and that also helps us with our privacy piece as well as the account piece. We used to create accounts for them around parent-teacher review. They'd always forget about it and, and the office coordinator would have to reset them. Now, basically, we invite them to our Edsby environment. They log in however they want. Uh, if they lose their password, they can reset it on their own with Edsby without us being uh, needing to contact our OCs. Um, but having them turn on their notifications and it is really quite clear if you've received the parent email yourself um, to turn on that notification it will alert them on their personal email address if they've chosen to turn on notifications and let them know yes in fact you do have a message there waiting for you click the link also on the phone it tells you that as well notifications are not on by default but you do get a, a pop-up screen saying please turn on your notifications would you like to yes or no um chandre answered that uh loren there we advise parents to ensure they have pushed notifications so, yeah yeah so, one uh, thing sorry mark yeah. can i just nope. one thing i'm just going to jump in um just to be very very clear to everyone here when you send a message even if parents have their notifications on for the app it will never come up as a notification from the app from messages. Um, we've talked to Edsby about this, but as of right now, a message does not come through to your phone. It will come through in an email notification if they have their emails on. But just be aware, if you're expecting it to pop up on their phone right away, it doesn't. It'll let them know in the app with a little red icon that they have a message. It'll let them know on email, but it will not pop up right on their phone. Yeah, this is absolutely something we have brought to their attention saying, hey, it would be nice if the app worked kind of like the messages app on an iPhone where you would see right away, you'd get that push notification. Um, and it's certainly something that they're aware of. Um, it's not something that's new to them. And I would suspect it will come in a future build, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. But we don't have uh, any confirmation as to exactly when we might see that. Uh, so here, after I've sent that message, the BCC to all parents, you'll see it in your messages center. You'll have the little um, envelope up top and it will say specifically broadcast. And, th and that's what the icon looks like. And there it says broadcast. So the broadcast is a message to all of your parents. Uh, remember, you can, if you're a high school teacher, you can select uh, any specific cohort of people, if it's a period one block or, or two class, uh, or your elementary classes, you can select all, and it will uh, select the appropriate people as well. Uh, so that's the broadcast. Uh, the other way you can go in is click on the class and then the students, and, and I'm going to show you that process next. So this is the individual messages. If you want to send an individual message to a specific student, uh, or even a parent of a student or a combination of, of uh, parent and student. Or what's also really handy is you can actually message the teacher, all the teachers of that one student. So many, many options. Uh, I find just playing around with this, getting familiar with the, the setting, uh, finding out where things actually are is quite helpful. Um, and we'll have some guides to go along with this as well, sending out just messages to specific groups. Uh, so to start this uh, on the class page, so this is the main class page, uh, which shows health education for K. Uh, under the students panels, you see your little astronaut people uh, underneath students, and they're all gray in our demo environment because we don't actually have any student pictures, but yours should be automatically loaded with anything available from the student information system. Every once in a while, you might see a few of the gray spacemen because those students don't have pictures within our system yet. Uh, it is very Facebook-like, so it's much, much better when you do have those pictures because right now it doesn't look extra useful to me right now. Uh, if I hover over those spacemen, it will tell me who it is, but you can see that it's designed to be very much um, a visual uh, a visual experience for the teachers as well. So for the individual messages, we're going to, in this section, click on students. We can either click on the students, uh, the word students, or we can click on the student themselves. Again, the gray space band doesn't really help you, uh, but uh, when you can see their pictures, it's a little easier. So here I've just clicked on students themselves and it will bring this up. Uh, from here, this is where you can do a few different things. Uh, you can list them, you can do your, your roster, you can print them, you can export them. And Chandra is actually going to show us here pretty soon how you can uh, do a few other seating arrangement uh, 
choices as well. So let's say I want to send a message to Edith. So what I would do is I would just click on Edith. I get a little pop-up that says, Edith, we can actually plan an absence. Uh, so if that student I know needs to be away for a school function, I can actually create a planned absence for that student that goes in automatically sent to the office. Uh, but right now what I've done is I've clicked message. Uh, the message allows me to send a message to the student only if I need to communicate with the student uh, or the parent only or the parent and students right in this section here or the current teachers. So there's really not much you don't have access to here. Uh, we've gotten some questions as far as um, is this the best way to be communicating to families and, and students? And absolutely it is. Everything within Edsby is totally within our bubble. So student privacy wise, um, being able to track and, and, and find um, information, potentially if there was a, an old message we needed to look up or, or maybe something happened, we need to recall that information. That is all available here for us within the environment. Uh, if we use some other tool, so for example, example like a remind or even if it were um, a, a class app that wasn't associated with our um, division or not set up specifically by us we might not have that ability and so we would encourage you to only use the uh, communication built into this tool for some of that some of that communication obviously at uh, other grades like I'm thinking your kindergartens uh, you might have an email list and that might be totally appropriate mostly what I'm referring to would be if there were student communication needed um, that were relevant to the course or the parents all built in with in Edsby. So moving forward, as everybody gets into the environment, it will be a little bit more ubiquitous with their access. They'll be in the app, they'll be planning absences, and more people will be familiar. So it will become much more natural than it potentially is right now. So right here, um, we'll just move from, I'm not actually going to go in and create a, a message. Uh, Chandre will also show you how we can create a um, a poll. There's also uh, the parent teacher uh, travel forms, uh, permission slips that you can create as well that go through the families and we can demonstrate that. It's quite a handy little tool. Again, all these little things we're talking about, we'll have, we have guides for most of them. And if not, we'll be developing those guides um, as well. So uh, just moving into a little bit about what the student sees. Um, we do actually have GSCS videos on our hub called what the student sees and what the parent sees. So if you're not quite familiar, you want some reassurance as to what they can see, feel free to go to that resource hub and check out those two videos. I'm actually also going to copy and paste a couple Vimeo videos directly into the chat uh, and those are directly from the Edsby site and you'll see it gives you a really good overview as to what a student sees as well as what a parent will see. Uh, those might be good to share out at staff meetings too if you know there's some apprehension or feel free to point them towards the videos we have already created for them. Um, on the home page, uh, you have your classes panel on the left, uh, a link to their portfo uh, portfolio, their learning story, frequently used in elementary, but I can also see some classes that might use this in high school. Any groups that the student is associated with uh, is number seven there near the bottom, um, which can also act kind of like a class. They can receive messages through the groups as well and participate. So groups, I think, will be a really handy feature that we'll be building into our use here fairly soon. Um, let's see. The River of News is at the top. We haven't really explored that to its full potential, but that will be something coming soon. The River of News uh, could be kind of what scrolls in the TVs and commons, uh, news items could be student notices, um, anything could be posted in there. It can be run by the office, but it could also be potentially run by an SRC. At the high school level, I would see the SRC being able to take full advantage of that section number two there at the top, the river of news. Uh, recent activity, which is quite handy, is right in the middle. Anything you've been working on, anything that's been assigned relatively recently. And on the right-hand side there, you see your calendar. Uh, the calendar is really good also for being able to kind of find out what is pressing as far as due dates, as well as you can see kind of halfway down there on the right, uh, there is a submit button. Any assignment that allows for a digital submission will be right there on your main page. Uh, here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump into a class 
uh, the this student they have their classes on the left hand side they're obviously a grade nine student you can see arts education nine english uh, and this is the class i'm going to take a little bit more of a closer look at so um, a student can not only participate in the class itself but they can click on the my work button the my work button will be an area where they'll be able to see their shared assessments so remember our high school teachers our elementary teachers we're always in utmost control of what is shared with families what is shared with parents and what is shared with students in regards to uh, student assessments so on the grade book if you have a blue share button that means it's not shared so you can share that if you have your assessments completed and you're you're confident and ready to share that as soon as you click the share button it will show up in the my work section of the students uh, area uh, for the class as well as the parent will almost see the exact same thing and I'm, I'm going to demonstrate the parent view after the student view. This is one of the views when they first click on the uh, my work section for this one class so we can see uh, different visual indicators of success there so you can see different timelines uh, if the student had any absences correlating uh, potentially you can kind of see there's a couple marks there around the 60% Potentially, you might see a few bubbles near the bottom where it might be some absence or lates. Any of those absences or lates that are recorded will show up on the bottom. So you can kind of get a, a visual indicator as to maybe the student wasn't as successful as they could have been because they were missing for a period of time. So that might just be another opportunity for, for an, uh, an availability to kind of offer a different approach or, or work with the student. Uh, while this is handy, being a visual indication, it doesn't necessarily show everything you might want to look at. So what I've done is I've just clicked on the word assessments. And where that is, uh, if you look near the top right hand corner of the screen, this is the graph, a visual indication, a graph of their performance. And it shows obviously the, the percentile versus the timeline. Uh, if I click on the assessments, this I find is a little bit more useful. I, it, it's, it's, um, I think more appropriate to kind of some of the courses I had taught in high school. You're going to get uh, information at the top as far as any incomplete assignments, upcoming assignments, ungraded assignments, and graded. So the ungraded I feel is sometimes a little bit uh, can be confusing because it doesn't necessarily mean that the teacher themselves haven't graded it, but they haven't been shared back to me. So if I look at this uh, teacher's gradebook, there would be seven assessments that they have not clicked the share button for. So that will show up as an ungraded assignment, but any of those 14 graded assignments will be available to view. Uh, and you can see there, uh, it also will show you a list of the upcoming assignments uh, due 40 weeks from now. Obviously, you really wanna pay attention to the due dates because the due dates are how everything will be organized in the class content as well as in the gradebook. So pay special attention to those. I could submit it if I was a student. If I knew, hey, I have my inquiry project uh, done, my inquiry research project, and I wanna submit it, I can click submit. Um, that second one there, writing pieces, it says not done. So that's where a teacher would put a flag they would have um, right clicked on the gradebook and you have the options to select incomplete, missing, not done. The not done will actually give me an alert and it will alert the parents that it's not done as well. So a really good way to follow up on students who maybe have missing tasks. Uh, the big difference here um, within the class page is students do not have access to the grade book. The difference between what you see as a teacher and the students. So this is what they will see. They'll see that graph, they'll see any graded assignment that is shared with them. Anything unshared will be under the ungraded category. Um, they can see their work, they can click on my work, it gives them a few different views like we said. They can also click on the outcomes and see what outcomes have been attached to which specific assignments. They can see their attendance and in the future, the previous report card button will show previous report cards. But as we've just moved into the system, it will not have historical um, access to those report cards. Sorry, I, I know the chat is going quite fast. Um, I'm just trusting Chandra and maybe Loren have uh, picked up on a few of those. It looks like they are. If you do have questions, Chandra or Loren, uh, or need to kind of overtake, please let me know. That's no problem at all. All right, just moving on in now also uh, to what a parent sees. 
Um, what a parent sees when they log into Edsme, they see the home screen. So this will be familiar. It looks very much like the teacher home screen. However, instead of a list of the classes that a teacher is seeing, they will only see a list of classes that their children are associated with. Um, so within the section, each child and parent will be shown a condensed version of the same information that is shown to uh, the child's home screen. So it'll, it'll show the child's classes, the calendar and recent activities. It's very much kind of an overview. You can see that this parent has one student, uh, Joseph Lee. You can see their teachers uh, and the, the names of the classes. You can see recent activity. If they want to create an absence, it's also very easy to do from this main screen. They can uh, click absent today. It'll bring up the absence that gets sent automatically to the teacher and the office as well as scheduling an absence for the future as well. Um, perfect. And yeah, sorry, uh, Chandre and Lorraine, please just jump in anytime. I'm just going to continue with this. All right. So uh, specifically moving into what the parent sees for their one student. So we've clicked on Mason. Mason Abbott is the son of Sandra Abbott. Again, looking very familiar. You see Mason's classes on the left-hand side. Um, you're going to see the home screen. You're going to see their child's work, uh, all the classes they're associated with on the right-hand side. Uh, what I'm going to do is I just kind of hovered over the ELA 9 class, and you can either click on the class, which will take you to the parents view of the class, which is just the main feed, anything that's been posted, uh, any of the due dates, but they will not be able to see anything a student has written on that post. However, for this purpose, I'm going to click on the My Work button. The My Work button is hidden until you hover over it with your mouse. As soon as you hover over the ELA 9 class, the My Work pops up, from which you can click on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you a live demonstration from the exactly what I've gone over. So this is a teacher. Uh, I, I have been experimenting with video. Um, video is working quite good, uh, but we have alternate ways. We're going to have some more PD or more available resources of that coming out here pretty quick. Um, I am going to log out of the teacher and I'm going to jump into my parent, my test parent account. Doesn't seem to want to log out. Very weird. Sorry. There we go. Um, parent. So this is what a parent would see. Just like we had in that previous screen, they can see the recent activities, all of what uh, the teacher had been assigning, Mr. Jet. Uh, you can see the um different due dates of, of assignments on the right hand side what i'm going to go over is the my work for that student the my work will show you the exact same thing the student has seen first it shows the visual graph of where they are in particular assignments if they hover over them they do get a little bit more information so if i notice that this student's assessment was around the 60 mark i could hover over it and say oh that was the presentation on classroom debate and maybe have a conversation with my child about that I could also then click on those assessments. It will show me all the different assessments. Um, this class does not show the weighting, but there is an option in the class set up to be able to show the weighting because what you might find is a teacher might or a parent might try to add these up and say, I have a different final mark for the, the student, whereas uh, not all of these are necessarily weighted the same. So that's where the weighting, adding the weighting to the view of the parents under the class setup might be helpful in, in that clarity piece. You'll also be able to see here under the outcomes, which of those outcomes what were completed. You could see their attendance. Obviously, I haven't played too much with the attendance for this one student, but they can always click back into Ebs, Eb, Edsby and make an absence for today. They can select a reason and send that to the office and that will show up for the teacher as well. I'll now just switch over from the parent to the student so you can get a view of that. And then I will hand it off to Chandra to show you a few things. So again, very similar. 
you see that the student is in our demo demographic of the uh, school division. They're in the SK High School. They see the classes on the left, the recent activity. If I wanted to go into the class, this is the class view again, very similar to what the teacher sees. The only difference here is at the top, they can see the class, they can see the work and the planner. They cannot see the grade book as you would have seen as the educator in the class. And again, only what has been shared with that student is visible. So we have the graph, the assessments, outcomes, et cetera. And if I'm the student and I know I have this completed, I can click submit. I could actually write a private message to the teacher as well. Uh, saying, hey, can you please provide some feedback on this particular aspect of the assignment? I can attach a file, I can attach a link. Uh, and once, one thing I would say, especially for our high school students who have uh, been in the hybrid learning scenarios, they're really good at being able to work uh, collaboratively on online documents, such as like a Google document. So I would actually suggest um, getting students to share the editable or viewable links to which you can apply some comments. Uh, a comment in a, a Word doc or a Google doc will have to have them either reject or accept your, your recommendations and then they could submit again. So a really good process as far as uh, the formative development of a student's um, overall capacity on an assignment. So a really good process there of which this is um, really supportive. So what I'll do is I know Chandra is going to show a couple things. So I'm just going to turn it over to Chandra. Mark, before you yeah. stop, we're just going to get you to clarify um, the high school grades. So can you actually put an incomplete? Is that in their menu for high school? Yes. So I'm going to just jump in back to the teacher and show you exactly. Sorry, teacher, 1021. And I'm show you that tab. Okay, so hopefully you can see this tab. Uh, I'm going to go to my ELA 10 class. I'm going to go to my grade book. And I don't have anything entered in here other than one. So here's an example, uh, the student, if I'm putting in my grades, I can click the uh, blue drop down arrow, and this is where I can add some flags. So uh, the overdue, the not done or incomplete, uh, those are also really helpful in that they will alert the student uh, as well as the parent that something is not handed in. So that would be what EDSB would suggest as best practice. Uh, but for the codes, what the code is going to, to look for is what's down, if you look at the bottom of my screen, this quiz uh, has an assessment scale out of, I think it's out of 100. Here, I'll go to a different one, uh, percentage. Ooh. And you'll be able to see. You have a high school assessment scale in one of those two, Mark, that might provide yes. some more options. Okay. High school, so there we go, this one, my entry slip. There we go. So yeah, a great example uh, under one of my assignments and I just clicked on the assignment and clicking on the assignment gives you a different view. Uh, what I like for this view is that I can not only put in the marks. So for example, the high school assessment scale is the bottom of my screen. Uh, and I think we all have posters in, in all of our classrooms that will define what each of these are. Um, my view right now will not be the exact same as yours. You'll see that you have an IE plus as well as an IE. We have IE set to, it correlates to a 0%, as you can see here on the average, but the IE plus is a 35. So different for different assessment purposes. Uh, this will allow me to also write comments. Um, but certainly anything under failing, anything 50% or lower will be highlighted in red as another vis visual indication as to uh, the student's performance, as well as the status. This might be something I might want to write as incomplete or not done, and uh, definitely probably make a comment. You can also add a little discussion point here. You can maybe uh, link to a resource, you can link to the assignment again. You could record your voice saying something about that student's performance. Uh, and if you were happy with that, you can share it. One thing we do get a question as to how do you switch between those views? So this is my gradebook view. Um, and one nice little tip, if you have a scale, so for example, this one's out of 10. If for the most part, all of my students got 10, 
I could use it as an Excel spreadsheet, put in 10 for the first one, uh, click on the cell and then just drag it down and then I can change my outliers. So that way I can kind of go in and do my assessments. I can also drop uh, from average. So if I know my student Lily, maybe she was away or had uh, we had alternative arrangements, I want to drop that from her average or maybe uh, it wasn't indicative of her performance or overall ability in the course. That might be something under my teacher professionalism that I just choose to remove from her grade. And, and you can do that by using those flags as well. The drop down and drop from the average, if that makes sense. Sorry, uh, I see you have your hand raised. I couldn't see that as I was. Yeah, no worries. Um, my question is just like, can I put in an assignment um, that, like, I don't want to assign grades. I just want to say whether it's complete or incomplete. So I know that I can add an assignment and then flag it, um, but I just want to do it without adding any grades whatsoever to it. Is that possible? Um, because I, I see that, like, I can kind of, you know, enter a blank assignment and then flag it, but then when I saw the student progress reports, it didn't show up. So, okay. yeah, like that's, I'm just looking for that, I guess, that feature of like Pinnacle where I could just say incomplete or complete. Yeah, my guess is that we would need to have a specific assessment scale that's either complete or incomplete because what the scale, the scale that you're typing in, whatever you're typing in is, is looking at what uh, scale you're using. So, for example, the one, this one I have here is the high school assessment scale. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's only looking at what we have at the bottom. And so, for example, I can't even put in like a 90% because the 90% is not actually part of the scale. So Mark, it's, yeah. it'll be marked as invalid. Could you potentially do that as a formative? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Great, great question. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to edit this. And where I have this type of assessment as summative, I can move it as formative and save it. And that will allow me to make any it, um, I could either put, well, this scale might not be the most appropriate in IE or, or exceptional, but it will allow me to put in um, that information without actually um, making a contribution to the student's final grade. And if you did have to put in a grade, what we were suggesting for elementary with formative is you just might make it out of two, for example, or out of one. So maybe zero is not done and one's done. Um, but again, it doesn't transfer over um, to the to the student's final grade. Yeah, and it is a great point there also about the formative versus summative. Uh, had a few questions about that. Obviously, formative uh, diagnostic in, in nature should not con uh, contribute to the final grade. Uh, but certainly, it will allow you to develop the evidence uh, to make a professional judgment on a student's final grade. Uh, we will have some information coming out soon about the reporting periods, the midterm reporting period for high school, and then the final reporting period. Uh, and it will talk about how you actually have to make the judgment on the student's grade as it will be calculated, uh, knowing that it will also likely have some uh, formative uh, evidence for you as well. But you see here that again, anything that's blue means it's unshared, white is shared. If I did as a teacher make a mistake, maybe I've sent these out uh, and wish to recall them, I could simply just click on that and it calls them all back. Uh, Chandra, did you want to jump in and show those two things sure thing um give me a second here okay so one thing i was going to show really quick just because some teachers have been using this because of covid is within each class teachers actually have the option to make a seating plan so if you're being asked by admin to do contact tracing and provide seating plans, you can quickly move, sorry, you need to press the edit button, <laughs> but you can quickly move students around creating that seating plan and then you can save it, you can clear it, you can move kids in and out and you can print that, save it as a PDF, send it into your office. Your admin can also just go in here and see that. So that would be used in most cases as a COVID contact tracing seating plan. So just one neat thing that EDSV can do one more time. I went into one of my classes, I'll go home. I was in the class, 
I used the class drop down menu and then clicked on seating plan. Another great option to use within Edsby is just being able to go into your parents, clicking on this parent form and then downloading this contact sheet, um, exporting it into a nice Excel document. So you can print that Excel sheet off if you would like to have this printed and saved somewhere. I know that that is probably more so for elementary school teachers, but a super handy feature. One more thing would be going into your students within a class. And not only can you message parents from here or parents and students, but you can also use a parent permission form. So there is um, poll options here on your Edsby main page. However, if you're doing something a little more private for students and you want a, a response that only you can see, um, or a response going out to parents, you can use that permission form and you can A, use it as a permission form and replace this information here, or put in something that you want some feedback on, add in a few options here, and then send it out. You can even add in videos or other things. And when parents see that, or when you get it back from parents, you see a nice little outline of who has or hasn't responded, the percentages, as well as you have a resend request option to anyone who didn't complete um, the form. And you can print these as well if you are using them as permission forms. Any questions about any of those features there? Sorry, I still have a question about the grade book, but maybe I can ask after. It's just, I'm just thinking about putting in assignments like homework, and um, it just seems like you have to add a grade. And um, like if it's zero or one, I'm just wondering about parents just asking like, what are these zeros or ones? Um, so I'm just wondering if anyone has a solution for just putting in homework that's like ungraded. I would essentially just do it as formative. Formative is going to be the only way that you can do it without it counting towards a grade at all. For sure. Then, it is formative, but is it possible mm -hmm. to not assign it a grade? Uh, you could just write in it that this is not a graded okay. assignment. It is okay. complete or incomplete. And then I just wouldn't share out those marks because if you don't press that share button, the parents aren't going to see it. Okay. Thank you. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. Okay. Ashley, question? Sorry, piggybacking on that. If you don't assign it a mark, would parents still see the like not done? Like if you marked the, if you flagged it as not done or incomplete or late, they'd still see the flag for that, even though you didn't share it? They should still be able to see flags on accounts. Um, the other thing with that is even without it being flagged, if a student doesn't complete it or doesn't hand it in, um, it automatically tells parents.